Hey, do you guys remember Bendy and the Ink Machine? That indie horror game from 2017 based on old black and white cartoons from the 20s? You know, like the old 20s, not the current 20s. Wow. Yeah, uh, Bendy. This game was a huge deal on YouTube like five or six years ago. I remember it being one of the first big kind of FNAF competitors, and it was only gonna get bigger with a sequel quickly entering development after the game wrapped up its final chapter. And then three years went by, we heard basically nothing, and everyone kind of assumed the game was quietly canceled. But then, right as I decided to make this video, boom, trailer drops and Bendy and the Dark Revival gets announced to be coming out this month. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, it's already out. So that's all well and good. Apparently I can predict the future of indie games, but we're not talking about the sequel today. Before we can dive into the Dark Revival, first we gotta explore the original. So strap in, these are Fofi's adventures in Bendy and the Ink Machine. But first, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. These guys are a subscription service that sends you a box of awesome stuff from under the radar brands every single month. Stuff like clothes, homeware, kitchenware, outdoor gear, and more. You want live oysters? They got them, they'll give them to you. Each box of awesome stuff has about $70 of value for a fraction of that price. Personally, I decided to go with their Forge box with this gorgeous little hunter knife. I never go outside, but this will make me feel like I do. The Bard box full of seven amazing smelling natural bars of soap. Yeah, that's soap. I thought it was wood. I wanna eat this one but I'm not allowed. And I didn't know this up until I opened the box, but Bespoke Post actually teamed up with Dollar Shave Club to include a Club Series razor and a couple of replacement blades. And finally, the Cask Box, which is kind of an everything you need kit to cure and serve booze in style. I don't actually drink, I, I just like the barrel. <laughs> I'm a simple man. Barrel is yes, but there are plenty of other boxes for you to choose from with new ones added every month. Plus you can preview your box before it ships to decide if you wanna keep it, swap it, or skip that month entirely. In fact, you can skip a month or cancel entirely at any time. You only pay for what you want and it's totally free to join. Uh. So if any of that sounds cool to you, be sure to click the top link in this video's description to check out Bespoke Post for yourself and use promo code FOF20, that's F-O-A-F-2, zero at checkout to get 20% off your first box of awesome stuff. That's bespokepost.com slash 20 or just click the link below and use my promo code at checkout. Major thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. And now, uh, back to Bendy. <laughs> Chapter one. Moving pictures. The game begins and I am Henry Stein, an ex-employee of the old-timey animation studio, Joey Drew Studios. And years after things at the studio went south, I receive word from Mr. Joey Drew himself to come by the place. I swing the door open and I am greeted with the most excessive amount of orange I've ever seen. Jesus Christ. More importantly, the place is a wreck. Everything's totally falling apart, doors are boarded up, uh. and some rapscallions been going around writing cryptic messages on the walls. This is probably, probably good actually. Not much else to do right now, but just explore the place. So I wander aimlessly for a minute until I find... Well, that's just not safe. This is the ink machine. It's big, it's ominously hanging by a chain, and it kind of looks like an elephant. And then the game's like, turn it on. And I'm like, why? Not really sure what that's gonna accomplish, but I guess it'd be a short game if I didn't, so whatever. Oh. <laughs> you think you can scare one so easily, I, oh. Ah. I see. But shocker, the rickety old ink machine isn't working. Turns out the machine won't work until I prepare its shrine. You know, those very normal shrines you build around power switches to large pieces of machinery? Well, I place all the various offerings onto their corresponding pressure pads, normal, flip on the ink machine, turn a nearby valve, and... Yep, you know, this is exactly what I thought would happen. Place is already falling apart, what was the point of this? It was always only going to make a mess. <sighs> but all that was just to get the ink flowing again. Now we can turn on the actual ink machine. So I head back to the machine room, which has been boarded up, apparently. That's weird. No! Oh! Ah! Yes, I've heard this song before. I run away from the drippy beast that scared me, only for the floor of the studio to collapse right as I reach the door. Apparently this studio goes underground, where I find more spooky orange, coffins, pentagrams, and nightmarish visions that cause me to pass out onto the floor. This is going well. Chapter two, the old song. Once I wake up from my little nap, I grab a nearby weapon and start trying to find a new exit. And dude, this place is huge. I mean, how much space do you, uh, hello? Uh, okay. 
Bye. Eventually, I end up in the music department with nowhere else to go. Ah. Sorry, didn't mean to intrude. Yeah, uh, there's ink monsters now. Let me tell you, whatever this ink is, it's not just ink. It seems to be some kind of living mass with the ability to both create and corrupt other living things. I mean, how else would you explain a suspiciously abandoned animation studio crawling with both humanoid creatures and living cartoon monsters? Indie horror games are never particularly straightforward with their lore, but it seems pretty clear to me that these ink monsters I'm fighting are probably old employees who were corrupted by the ink. Oh, that reminds me, uh, the game's got combat now. You know, combat might be a strong word. You run around swinging a blunt object and that's kinda it. It's really clunky. I get horror games can't make you super powerful, but eh. <laughs> but anyway, I bash a few ink monsters, solve a couple puzzles, and finally manage to drain some ink blocking my path. But none of that really matters because some jerk in a bendy mask sneaks up behind me and knocks me out. And his name is Sammy Lawrence. He used to be the director of the music department, but now he's, uh, this. He captures me and starts going on some insane ramble about the ink demon, that bendy monster that yelled at me in chapter one, who Sammy here seems to fear and worship like a god. And I just happen to be the sacrifice. So I got that going for me. But luckily the ink demon just absolutely mauls Sammy. Yeah, lucky for me, that is. Not, not, not so lucky for him. But with Sammy out of the way, that means Bendy's coming for me next. You know what's funny? I never realized this game doesn't actually jump scare you when you die. I start sprinting down the halls, Bendy pops up, and if he catches me, I'm not jump scared like in FNAF. The screen just goes dark and I hear a dumb Roblox oof sound. <laughs> I know people think jump scares are cheap, but without them, a lot of the tension actually gets lost. Well, anyway, I managed to outrun the ink demon only to be confronted by another mysterious creature. I see a can of soup ominously roll across the floor and around the corner appears... Friend. Chapter three, rise and fall. So I'm hanging out with my new best friend, another living cartoon named Boris, and we start delving deeper into Joey Drew Studios. Well, first Boris forces me to make him soup, three whole cans of soup that he then does not eat, rude, and then we explore more of the studio. Blah, 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 orange hallways, whatever. Eventually Boris and I split up and I find myself in this dark, creepy hallway surrounded by posters and plushies of a character named Alice Angel. Hmm, I wonder if we might be meeting a new character character soon. Ah, there we go. This is Alice Angel, and for the rest of the chapter, she's in charge. Boris and I take an elevator deeper down into the studio, pass through this big Alice door, and find... Ooh. 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 Boris? You good? Yes? No? Boris? If you're okay with being confronted by a room full of duplicates of yourself, mutilated and tied to operating tables, do nothing. All right, cool, I'm gonna press on then. So here's what's been happening. Alice here used to be a voice actor named Susie Campbell who worked at Joey Drew Studios. She loved the character of Alice Angel. Like, she was obsessed, but was eventually replaced with a new actress and she got real upset. Once the studio got all ink crazy, it seems she became corrupted and turned into this twisted version of the character she voiced. And since then, she's been experimenting on a bunch of the various ink creatures throughout the studio to extract ink from them to keep herself beautiful. Which explains the Sea of Dead Boris we saw earlier. But instead of attacking, Alice says she'll help me escape the studio if I do a few things for her first. And for real, the rest of this chapter is just a series of chores for Alice Angel. I run around collecting gears, get ink samples from monsters using a giant syringe, collect a few valves, slice up a bunch of bendy cutouts, fight off more ink monsters, and collect five ink hearts, all while making sure to avoid big drippy bendy over here. I'm gonna be honest, this whole part of the game is kind of a slog. Yeah, it adds more gameplay, but story-wise, absolutely nothing is happening here. But finally, Alice runs out of junk to make me do and tells me I can leave. I hop back into the elevator and start heading back up, only for Alice to somehow override the thing and send me and Boris, who's here again, by the way, I guess he got over his existential crisis, crashing down to the deepest depths of the studio. The elevator crashes, I pass out, and as Boris tries to wake me up, he gets kidnapped by Alice. Oh no! Chapter four, Colossal Wonders. Things are not going well. I'm surrounded by monsters, my only friend's been kidnapped, and the studio is only getting more deranged the deeper I go. More and more writing on the walls, some shrines to Bendy surrounded by ink creatures, random visions of grabby hands, and... Uh, 
Uh-huh. That's okay, because in this chapter, we're heading to the carnival. That's right. Not only does this animation studio go 30 levels underground, but there's apparently enough space to house an entire abandoned carnival. And you know what that means? Clunky mini games. Throw the ball, swing the hammer, shoot the targets. Shoot, shoot the targets. Shoot the, uh, hold on. There we go, shoot the targets. And the more mini games I play, the more areas of this warehouse I unlock. And eventually I find this huge abandoned carousel ride and a voice message starts to play from the guy who built this park, Bertram Piedmont. So, Bertram's the carousel, that's him. This is his face, in the ride, cool. And of course, uh, that means it's boss fight time. But as intimidating as this looks, it's actually really easy. I snag a convenient ax off the ground, wait for Bertram to stop his spinny tantrums, and then just hack away at his arms until they're all busted. And then I leave. A few flipped switches later, and I gain access to a haunted house attraction. I hop into the ride's cart because, that was the only thing I could do, and I set off on, honestly, the worst haunted mansion ride I've ever seen. <laughs> All leading to... Ooh. Well, I guess I found Boris. Ah, that's a bummer. So, Alice Angel kidnapped Boris, experimented on him, and turned him into this blobby monster you see here, Brute Boris, who throws me across the room to kickstart another boss fight. And this is where the entire game goes downhill. The point of this fight is to avoid Boris's attacks, let him tire himself out, steal some of his ink, and then use this nearby machine to turn that ink blob into a weapon. The fight has three phases, and you gotta go through this clunky process every single time. It sounds simple, but is so frustrating. Partially because Boris absolutely cheats. I swear to God, there's no way to avoid these jump attacks. But also, I didn't mention this, but I'm playing this on console, not PC. And this fight just straight up does not work with a controller. My first time around, this took hours to beat. But I finally beat Boris and the game's like, oh no, you killed your friend. Don't you feel sad and awful? But I'm like, is the game over yet? <laughs> and the answer is not yet. Because in a fit of rage, Alice Angel barges into the room and tries to attack me only to be stabbed through the chest by Alice Angel and Boris. Yeah. Chapter five, the last reel. Now, up to this point, I've been enjoying this game. It's not amazing, but it's cool. But after that awful Boris fight, I'm sorry to say the game is just kinda never good again. Chapter five is brutal, man. I wake up in a makeshift gel sail, gel sail. I wake up captured by this other Alice and Boris, trapped in like a makeshift jail cell. This new Boris is named Tom. He has a robot arm and he doesn't like me. And this new Alice is actually nice. and. I think is supposed to be the voice actor who replaced the original Alice, Susie Campbell. Nice Alice is like, here, have this visor that exposes secret invisible messages written on the walls that definitely won't be used in subsequent playthroughs to make up for the lack of lore presented in the actual game. Oh no, the ink demon's here, bye bye. <coughs> yeah, a bendy finds our little hideout and these guys just bail, leaving me behind. I bust my way out of the cell, push forward and eventually find, <sighs> A boat. This part sucks. You gotta pilot this rickety boat through a river of ink, but of course, there's some kind of giant bendy monster inside the ink ready to kill at any moment. Stay still too long and you're done. But the boat gets ink stuck in its, uh, what is that called? Spinny paddle thing? Acoustic motor? Whatever, ink gets stuck in there and you gotta knock it out to keep going. It is so slow, like torturously slow. And if you fail, you gotta start all the way back at the beginning. I hate it. And things don't get much better after I reach land and boom, Sammy Lawrence just stumbles back into the game and starts swinging at me. You remember him? The guy who got like eaten by Bendy in like chapter two? Yeah, yeah, he's back now. I fight back and by fight back, I mean run in circles for a while. Wonderful combat system. But Sammy eventually overpowers me, throws me to the ground and nearly kills me only for Alice and Tom to once again sneak up behind and kill him before he can get me. Is that? 
Is that like your thing? But what follows, I think, is the worst part of the entire game. Worse than Brute Boris, worse than the boat, the absolute low point of Bendy and the Ink Machine. After shoving an axe into Sammy's neck, Alice, Tom, and I are ambushed by hordes of ink creatures. And this fight went on for ever. I just kept dying, respawning, fighting, dying, respawning, fighting, dying. The fight just wouldn't stop. What was I doing wrong? Well, I looked it up and apparently what I'm supposed to do here is get more kills than Tom and Alice in a row without dying. How on earth would I have ever gotten that? The game doesn't give me any indication that that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I can't tell how many kills they're getting while they're running all over the place. I have no clue how many kills I'm getting because all these enemies just blob together. And why would I even be competing with these guys in the first place? They've saved my life twice now. Ugh. Whatever. I straight up just lucked my way into beating this bit. Tom, Alice, and I join forces, push forward, and whoops. <laughs> Of course. I fall through the floor again, lose my weapon and my team just to wind up in... Ugh, great. A maze. Yeah, sorry, this chapter was really trying my patience. So here's where we are. There's a room full of ink next to this fancy piping system that's missing a few parts. Run through the maze, grab some blobs of ink, and use those same dang machines from the Boris fight to make pieces of pipe, drain the ink, and enter the film vault. Oh, and there's Tom and Alice showing up after I do all the hard work. Same as usual. I like this game, I promise. But this is it. After a few more hallways, I enter the ink machine itself and reach the final showdown with the ink demon. And I call it a showdown because this really isn't a fight. I just run around this big arena and flip switches to open a nearby door, all while avoiding Bendy as he just kind of runs around. Look at him go. As my boy. And once I make it out of the first arena, it becomes one of those classic get the enemy to charge into something fights. Basically, I just trick Bendy into destroying his own ink machine and then bolt back to where the fight started. And after all this chaos, the thing that finally puts Bendy to rest is symbolism. symbolism. I play an unaired reel of film called The End. It makes Bendy go, ah, and then, whoa. I forgot colors that weren't orange existed. So the ending of this game's kind of confusing. Suddenly I'm in Joey Drew's house and he gives me this spiel about, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. But then he's like, come visit the old workshop. There's something I need to show you. Swing the door open and. All right, Joey, I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. <sighs> so the end of this game is a time loop. Hooray. How satisfying. Apparently, if you play through the game again, you get to see all those secret messages, and I'm sure they're very interesting and full of lore, but uh, no, 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 I'm done. This game really wiped me out by the end, so I'm just gonna call it here and take a nice long break from Bendy. All right.